In the last lecture, we have discussed about the queue data structure. In this lecture, we will discuss about the various types of queues possible. One of the queue possible is linear queue. This is a simple queue. This is also known as a simple queue. Another queue which is possible is a circular queue, which actually is an improvement above, above the linear queue. One type of the, the queue is priority queue. Priority queue means we will be assigning some priority to the items and uh, the service is done on the basis of those priorities. Another type of the priority queue is the double-ended queue wherein we are assuming that there are two ends and uh, at both the ends the services are offered. We will discuss about the linear queue in this lecture. Fine. The linear queue for discussing the linear queue, let us suppose that we have a linear uh, we have a fixed size buffer. Let's say we have a fixed size buffer. Let's say the size of this buffer is six. Fine. And let's say these are the indexes of this buffer 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We can also consider that this is an array. Fine. <clears throat> Let us say that uh, there is a front and there is a rear. Fine. And uh, the front is assigned the index 1. And let's say rear has been assigned an index 0. So this is the initialization. For uh, insertion of an element, rare is updated by 1 or rare is incremented by 1. So rare is at 0 index for in, in items insertion, we are incrementing this rare to come at 1 position and let's insert an item, let's say x. After this, let's say we have to insert an item, so let's update this rare by 1 let's say y item has been inserted after this let's say we have to insert another element rare is updated by one let's say w has been inserted we have to insert another element let's say we increment rare by one and an item w has been inserted fine so rare is now at position number four now if you have to remove an element front is at one Simply remove this element and update front by 1. So x was the first item to be inserted and it is the first item to be deleted. If you have to remove another element, then front is again updated. Uh, first this item is deleted and then front is updated by 1. So y was the second item to be inserted and it is the second item to be deleted. Fine. This way, you can see that it is following the first in, first out or first come, first serve order. At this point of time, front is at 3 and rear is at 4. If you want to find out how many elements are there in the queue, it can be found by the formula rear minus front plus 1. So rear in this case is 4, front in this case is 3, and then plus 1. This makes out 2. Initially, when we had no elements, front was at 1 and rear was at 0. That time also we could have found the number of element by rare minus front plus 1. <coughs> rare is 0, front is 1 and then plus 1. This makes out 0. So initially we had 0 elements in the queue. Fine. So uh, we have seen here that for insertion of the element rare is updated by 1 and for removal of an element front is updated by 1. So let us write the uh, algorithm for the primitive operations on the linear queue or the basic operations for the linear queue. So the first operation that we will write is let's say the initialize. 
Fine. Let's say we have a queue and we are going to initialize the initialize this queue. For the initialization, we have seen that the rear of the queue is initialized at zero position and front of the queue is initialized at one position such that we have zero elements initially. Fine. So this is the algorithm for initialization. Fine. Now for the insertion operation, let's say insertion is known as NQ operation. Let's say we, a Q is given and let's say an item X has to be inserted. Fine. We have seen that uh, for insertion, rear is updated by 1. So first do that only. So Q dot rear is equals to Q dot rear plus 1. So this is the first operation that we are performing. After this, let's say uh, in this queue, whenever we have to insert, we have to insert in the buffer. Fine. So let's say the name of this is a buffer. And in the buffer, we are inserting at the rear position. So in the queue dot buffer, at queue dot rear position, we are inserting the item x. Right? So in the rear position at the buffer, we are inserting the item x. Suppose <clears throat> there we have inserted the items. We have taken the example in which the buffer size was 6. We have inserted an item here, rear was here. We have inserted an item here, rear was here. We have inserted an item here, rear was here. We have inserted an item here and rear was here. Let's say we have inserted an item here and rear is here. We have inserted an item again and rear is at 6 position. So if rear is at <coughs> 6 position, further insertion in this queue will not be possible or in the buffer will not be possible. Fine. Because there is no place to accommodate the new element. So if the rear has already reached to the maximum position, we cannot insert more elements. So let's say this maximum position is max Q position. Right? The 6 is actually max Q. So <clears throat> if you are trying to insert more elements in this Q, an overflow condition will appear. If you are trying to insert an element in the full data structure, this will lead to the overflow condition. If there is a bucket full of water and we are trying to pour more water in the in, in the bucket, obviously the item will uh, uh, the the water will overflow. Similar is the condition here. So we should first check this overflow condition here. We are saying that if Q dot rare has already reached the max Q position, then Insertion will not be possible. It's a condition of the overflow. So let's write an error, error message that Q overflows. And in case Q overflows, this is an erroneous condition. So we will prefer to exit. Fine. So if Q overflows, we will prefer to exit. And in case it is not, in case Q is, Q is not at the maximum position, then we will perform this operation. We will increment rare by 1 and then we will add one item at the rare position. Well, let's say the name of the name of this uh, array is buffer. So in this buffer we are inserting an item x. So this is the algorithm. So let me write a keyword algorithm here. A begin and an end. 
fine so this is the insertion operation now similarly we can write the removal operation in this queue also suppose we have to remove an item so first we save the element a you said this is friend so we save the item a somewhere let's say an x variable and then after this we are incrementing this front to next position new position so for writing the removal let's say the name of the removal algorithm is dq fine so there is a queue and you want to remove an element from this queue so what you have done you have taken the item from the front position so there is a buffer and from this buffer at the front position we have saved the element of the front position in the buffer in so let's say x variable and then you will update this front by 1 and after this you will return this x fine you have saved the element of the front in some x variable then you have incremented this front and the deleted item is x you will return this x if you are doing it with the array you know that uh, the actual deletion from the array is not possible we will just uh, override the element there <coughs> we can override the element at the vacant position so what we have considered that there is no element here and we have updated this front by 1 right we will consider that there is no element at one position we have incremented this front now suppose <coughs> you have zero elements in the queue you have zero elements in the queue so how can you find out there is zero element in the queue you have a formula of rare minus front plus 1 so if the rare minus front plus 1 is giving you zero it means there is no element in the queue and if you are trying to remove an element from the queue which has zero elements so obviously the deletion will not be possible and this will lead to the condition of underflow so removing an element from the uh, empty queue will lead to the condition of underflow so let let us first write the empty condition so a queue is given <coughs> from this queue <coughs> you want to <coughs> find out how many elements are there in this queue so you have just written a formula let's write formula if q dot rare minus q dot front plus 1 is equal to 0 then you will return true means empty is a boolean value function which is either returning a true or false depending on if this q has zero element or more elements so if this q has zero elements it is returning true otherwise it will return false fine so if q has zero elements it is it is returning true otherwise it is returning false so this is the algorithm for empty so now when we are going to remove the elements from the queue and queue has zero element we cannot remove the element this is an erroneous condition so let's check this condition if queue is empty so let's check this condition by calling the empty function we already designed the empty function if queue is empty <coughs> then obviously we cannot remove <coughs> the element from the queue so since we cannot remove the element from the queue we will write a condition queue underflows and in case queue underflows you will prefer to exit but if the queue does not underflow then you will save the element of front in some x variable you will increment this front and you will return this x this is the algorithm <coughs> for removing an element from the queue 
fine so we have discussed about the nq dq operations on the linear queue now suppose uh, we have a queue <coughs> and uh, we have inserted the elements in this queue a is inserted then b is inserted c is inserted d is inserted then we rear will be at this position and front will be at this position if you remove this a front will be here if you remove this element front will be here if you remove this element front will be here if you remove this element front will be at this position so if you mark the indexes at this point front is at 5 rear is at 4 and if you find out how many elements are there in this queue so rear minus front plus 1 so 5 minus 5 it is 0 it has 0 elements now suppose you are inserting more elements in the queue rear will be updated at this let's say x is inserted rear is again updated by 1 let's say y is inserted so front is at 5 rear is at 6 <coughs> and the number of elements here will be 2 6 minus 5 plus 1 now let's say you are removing the elements again. So x is removed, front is here. y is removed, front is at 7. If you try to find out how many elements are there in this queue at this moment, so rear is at 6, minus 7, plus 1. 7 minus 7, 0 elements. Now suppose you want to insert the element and now again. For you, the queue is empty. Queue does not have any element. But if you check in the NQ, it says that if the q dot rear has already reached to the maximum position then the then the insertion is not possible we are considering that the q is full at this time so the rear has reached to the maximum position and insertion is not possible fine so although we have the spaces before this but we cannot insert the element because this rear has already reached to the maximum position so this is actually the limitation of the linear q Fine. So if the queue dot rear has already reached to the maximum position, then the insertion will not be possible. So what we can do for the solution of this, that if the rear has already reached to the maximum position, let us bring back to the one position. Okay. So if it has already reached to the maximum position, let's bring it to one and then again insert here. So this actually will be treated as a circular. Okay, the circular action on this. So that we will do in the circular queue. So linear queue has some limitations and those limitations can be uh, the, those, those limitations can be uh, covered up by the circular queue. Thank you.